All right, welcome back to Fuck Us Talks Podcast, episode 80. Today on the show, it's time to renounce your whiteness, aka standards, in this week's Urban Decay. Then, a man died after being choked on the New York City subway line. We'll tell you why it's not as bad as it sounds. Then after that, Barstool fires one of their best employees for accidentally saying the N-word because their gambling parent company told them to. We'll get into that. And last but not least, you need to respect this bearded woman or else. It's Fluckus Talks, the podcast, episode 80, ranked the best new podcast of all time. Because words are just words until action actually starts. And actions speak louder than words. But at the same time, words speak louder than actions because sometimes it's the right thing to do. Very cool. Very cool. It's Fluckus cool. Talks, the podcast, featuring Richard Bradbury. Remember we spoke a few weeks ago about the problem with steaks and food and our meat products being injected with the mRNA vaccine? Well, do I have a solution for you. Pluckus Talks has partnered with Carter Country Meats to bring you the highest quality, most nutrient-dense steaks you can find out there. They're never going to be injected with any sketchy vaccines or anything you don't want in them. A lot of the competitors in the steak industry are a little too corporate and they basically just grow these cows as fast as they can, make them as fat as they can. They spray their food with chemicals and they just want to get them fat, butcher them and sell you the meat. The people over at Carter Country Meats have been doing this for generations and they do it the right way. They grow their steaks and their cattle correctly with a diverse diet and the nutrient density of these steaks is multiple X's better than the competition. There's probably some steak companies out there that you've heard of where the nutrient density is just, it's okay, it's eh. But the people at Carter Country Meats raise the cattle the right way, they free roam them, they give them a diverse diet, and the nutrient density is next level compared to the competition. Go to cartercountrymeats.com, use code FLECUS at checkout for your chance to win a free Bighorn box and get you some high quality meat with no you know what's in it and more nutrient density than you're gonna find anywhere else. These guys are different, it's a family run farm. CarterCountryMeats.com is the website. Go there today, use code FLECUS at checkout. Let's get into housing. All right, thank you to Carter Country Meats for sponsoring, we solved the problem. Remember we talked about that? I'm so happy to provide you guys with a steak company that we can trust, so make sure you go get your steaks, put the code in. That's a good partnership. It's a great partnership. That's what we want. Yeah, very happy, love those guys. All right, let's get into housekeeping. We have a very important housekeeping. I'm not just saying this, guys. This is one of our best shows we've ever done. We haven't even done it yet. Wow. Yeah. All right. Setting us up. You're setting Setting us up. up. I'm setting us up, but I believe. All right. uh, Vaccine wise, uh, there's nothing. uh, There's no problems. Everything's fine. Mm -hmm. No vaccine problems. No heart attacks and blood clots this week. Also, I think unrelated, all the money's gone again. Uh, yeah. We're running out of cash by June, I think the headline said. Yeah, I think Janet Yellen came and told everybody we're, we might run out of cash by June 1st. And now they're talking about printing that or minting a trillion dollar coin that they just keep in reserve. And it says we have more money now. It's like that's the late stage Republic shit we're at. Yeah. So, so all the money's gone again. Also, the person who created AI... The bank, is, banks are failing, too. The uh, banks are uh, failing, uh, yeah. We can't not mention that. Like, a couple more banks got... First Republic's gone. JP Morgan, all their deposits. All the so, money's going like this. Yeah. Again. <laughs> um, and also, the guy who created AI stepped down because he's scared for humanity. Probably nothing. <laughs> Decent sign. Yeah, Probably. It says, <laughs> the godfather of AI, quote. Like, you get a name like that. Yeah. Um, quits Google and says he regrets his life's work due to risks to humanity. It's probably nothing. Um, AI is going to create like an entire useless class that they're going to eventually kill. Probably nothing. Imagine your entire life's work. Yeah. And you go, never mind. <laughs> At the end. So that's probably nothing. Um, everyone's going to be killed who's useless in society. That's their goal. Probably nothing. Uh, they made a deal with the gnomes. Probably nothing. All right, let's move on and get to this transom trans stuff. Yeah, <laughs> More jump right in. Forget the financial crisis and AI taking over and humanity dying. Let's get into some trans stuff. I'm just kidding. Uh, no doppelgangers this week. As you guys know, we stopped doing the doppelgangers. But if we did, uh, this would be the ones I have. I think I'm the only one who prepared any. Richard Rapway got engaged to two girls. Yep. Pretty cool. Yep. Little <laughs> double. Little two for one. <laughs> little two piece. Very nice. Congratulations. You know, That's you. Yeah, exactly. And that then you also were riding your scooter. Yeah. 
How'd that go? Well, had a tough time. It was muddy. <laughs> you don't ride in the mud, I thought. It was muddy. Took a turn. Yeah, boom, there tumble, you go. A little tumble. Didn't even stop your head from hitting the ground. Um, and I know we don't do doppelgangers anymore, but I actually have one for you. We uh, watch it. Watch <laughs> it. <laughs> watch it. Um, we. I, well, I went to the dog park yesterday with Jerry. Um, took Jerry to the dog park, and there's a guy. It's the closest doppelganger I've ever seen, and. what We'll just let the video play. <laughs> oh, there it is. Something's wrong with that chair. Something's wrong with that chair. Okay, that does look just like me. So that's the closest we've ever had to you. Two things. Number one, that chair was broken already, which is why it was donated to the dog park. Okay. Number two, as I'm getting up from the broken chair, my leg, you can see... My legs look pretty muscular. Okay. So it's not even a doppelganger, you're admitting. You're, yeah. We're not even laundering it through. We're not even laundering it through. All right. That's me. Um, okay. You know how I mentioned the gnomes before? Yeah, yeah, yeah. There's also giants. I think we all know that, right? Yeah, Nephilim, Nephilim types yeah, or whatever. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They probably made the pyramids, and then once we return the golden capstone to the pyramids, then everything globally will go back to like a more pre uh, pleasant frequency. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Okay, I just want to make sure we're all on the same page there. Mm -hmm. All right, speaking of giants. Yeah, Iran has a giant. Yeah, Iran has a giant. He's chained up. He's in chained a, up. 15 floors deep. And yeah. that's why we went to a war in Afghanistan and shit. Uh huh. Because there's a couple of giants over there. The, yep. the soldiers saw him. Of course. One of the, they, they think they killed one. Of course. Dan Crenshaw obviously denies it. Yeah. So, so who do you believe? Yeah, Dan. Let me guess. There's no giants are stupid. Let me guess, Dan. <laughs> Um, all right. Speaking of giants, uh, this woman on Tinder is six foot eight, two fifty. Yeah, that's a that's a different kind of experience there. Look at that! Wow. I am your ideal woman, six eight, two fifty of pure muscle. Only eat beef. Will bear a child. Sure to lead nations. Will roughly be the size of a Viking. Can't read and do not want to learn. <laughs> <laughs> Looking for a compact man to ride on my shoulders so I look cool. Well, I mean that honestly is tempting. That's a that's a certain type of guy might might go for that. Because imagine you have kids like those. If you have, say, five kids with that woman, that'll really come in handy for the water wars. <laughs> yeah, the water wars. <laughs> TBD. You'll guys, that's episode 90. You'll hear about that. Yeah. All right. We got to move on. We have a very important show. It's very well scripted. We have, it's one of our best shows. Make sure you guys are tickling the post, oh, juice yeah. the algo. It's been helping so much lately. Give us a little tickle, tickle. It goes a long way. <laughs> yeah, juice us. Juice us. Juice the algo. All right, uh, moving on. There's a writer's strike in Hollywood. Yeah, and uh, pretty much all the worst shows ever have to shut down. Yeah, and it's like, guys, no one watches your stupid shit. <laughs> it's like you're on such thin ice with TikTok. You think now's the time to do a writer's strike? I know you're competing with short form like free videos, content, free content, and then like you're writing in like, well, she's strong, you know, just the worst cringe forced yeah. writing ever. Yeah, no one watches your Mindy Kaling bullshit. Yeah, yeah. Uh, remember, remember the guy who uh, who wrote that line about Trump have uh, with Putin's cock holster. Yeah, he wants more money. You got to pay up for that. Yeah. That's that premium <laughs> shit. <laughs> Yo, Rapway, who am I? I think we need more money. <laughs> I don't know. I'm a line cook on the Titanic. Asking for a raise. That's what these people are Water doing. Water up to your neck. Yeah, there's one lady. Um, yeah, this woman came up with a sign and also maybe a chant. She says, writers have student debt. Zaslav has a private jet. Yeah, Zaslav probably made the company. Yeah, he probably fucking invented it and you're the labor. And you write stupid jokes and you wear a mask. I look this lady up. Oh, you write for Gear Squad versus Dr. Boring? <laughs> I never heard of that shit. Yeah, these people get canceled on after one season on Netflix. You know, it's like, dude, a chimpanzee with a typewriter could have came up with this, I yeah. think. For oh, most of she them. needs more money. She writes for Under the Table, that show you never fucking heard of. That's probably on what? Paramount Plus or something? Some weird invented internet channel. Oh, <sighs> So it's actually hilarious. These people are so like delusional and so removed from reality that they think it's like, yeah, we need more. I'm a lesbian. Yeah. I need more cash. You know, it's it's funny. Uh, last time there was a writer's strike, I believe it was like around 2008 or something mm. like that. And it was during season one of Breaking Bad. And mm. they cut it short. So I was mm. actually affected by that. Mm. This one, the only show I watch right now is Succession. 
Yeah. So that's filmed and done. So see ya, toodles, TV writers. Yeah, see ya, TV. I go TikTok and I go. <laughs> <laughs> um, all right, moving on. We have a very important show. We have to kind of keep a pace. Okay. Uh, all right, Met Gala costume review. We're going to do this one quick. Yeah. The floor had trans flag colors. As always, men were dressed as women. There was a guy in a white rose outfit and a guy in a black rose outfit. It's probably some sort of Illuminati ritual. Uh, they shimmered up the twinks. They planted the seed for transhumanism with that cat guy. And Brittany Griner is definitely a woman. <laughs> was Brittany Griner there? Yeah. Oh, my God. Like six foot eight wearing some man's outfit. Oh so it's like anything God. you want to add to that? Uh, I think you summed it up pretty quick, man. <laughs> yeah. you're, you're on point today. Thank you. I'm really feeling good. It's one of our best episodes, I can already tell. Uh, Met Gala 2023. Done. Next. <laughs> There's a bug near me. All right. Um, Richard Rapway, is there anything you want to tell me? All right. I'm trying to see if there's an asset for this, if there's something. Uh, no, nothing I want to tell you. No? Yeah. How about you guys watching? Is there anything that you think I'd want you to tell me? I'll give you a hint. My mustache is growing into my mouth. Oh, yeah. I thought you were supposed to get a haircut. Yeah. You guys let it happen again. <laughs> <laughs> Remember, like, last time my beard was like this, and I was, like, completely schizophrenic, and I was like, guys, what were you, what were we doing? Nobody warned me. No one warned me. And I was like, if it ever happens, you have to tell me. And then every week, I'm just like, yeah, hair's fine. I like it. And then no one says anything. Yeah. Happened with the gyro meat, too. Remember, we were looking for bulk order gyro meat? Yeah. No one was like, yo. Pump the brakes. That's like 8,000 calories a day. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, yeah. I don't know. I mean, get I don't cut, hate it, but I, I'm going to, I got to do something here. Mm-hmm. It goes into a fro, which I had as a little kid, mm-hmm. and then that's why I got a buzz cut every two weeks. And I would yeah. be like, I want a real haircut, but then after like a month, my hair is like an afro. Um, all right. I thought it was the best episode ever. We're talking about your haircut. Hey, that's what makes it good. <laughs> all right, moving on. Uh, sausage Finger, King Charles. What's that headline? Yeah, uh, King Charles, formerly known as Prince Charles. Uh, you guys have all seen. He's got the fat sausage fingers with the rings that are bursting. He's definitely got some sort of ailment, um, but we've bullied him. Uh, the internet has bullied out of showing sausage fingers and new portraits. Maybe people who break lawn chairs at the dog park shouldn't be talking about sausage fingers. I said it first. <laughs> <laughs> so we're allowed to make fun of it. I said it first. Yeah, the lawn chair was not broken at all, by the way, guys. That was a sturdy chair. I think it was some hard new plastic, actually. It was cooked in the sun for years, and then it was like brittle. And I was sitting, and everything was fine. And then Jerry brought the dog over. Uh, Jerry brought the ball over. And then I kicked the ball, and then that motion, like, yeah, blew me out. There was some torque for the blowout, but yeah. still, man. <laughs> we were laughing so hard. I, I mean, some things are just timeless, right? Fat guy <laughs> blowing out a chair, that's timeless. You can't write a better script. So. And then a lady came after, and she was sitting in the other chair, and then there was, like, pieces of plastic <laughs> on the ground, and then, the, other, then the, the, the broken chair was in the trash, and then I had, like, dirt on my butt. Yep. So if she was, if she was a little more of a sleuth, she probably could have put two and two together. Exactly. All <sighs> right, let's move on. Uh, a few things more in housekeeping before we get into cringe. Well, fat fat chair blowouts. Should we talk about those? How do you support your fat friends? Or sure. Is that yeah? I Maybe this is advice that you can take. So this was from a TikTok, right? Um, and we're not going to play it because it has copyrighted music. But uh, this woman sh- is showing us five ways you can support your fat friends. So let's just go through them and see what we can do. Uh, number one. Call ahead to restaurants to make sure they have fat-friendly seating. <laughs> it's like I'm bringing in a real fat fuck. <laughs> What's Can this chair made out of? <laughs> Steel? Oh, um, all right. Number two, communicate about stairs, parking, and walking at a venue. You always got a plan. Can't leave your fat friends out on an island. That's actually not a bad tip. Uh, number three, call ahead to ask about the weight limits of equipment. That's so embarrassing. All right. Number this is so much worse than number four. Make sure your uh, your home has fat friendly seating, so no armrests. It's all broad lounge yeah. couch type shit like this. Fatty's no, on no legs, just straight on the ground. Blocky yep. ottomans. And then last but not least, keep your negative body talk and diet plans to yourself. Don't even bring it up. We want to be blind to the to yeah, the dangers. Come on in. The chairs can hold you. <laughs> I checked. I called ahead. The chairs will hold. Yeah. So you're making a lot of phone calls. You're doing a lot of planning is what it sounds like. So it's like uh, as if you're moving around like an orca whale. Yeah. Like we can fit through. OK, we're going to bring him in. Yeah. Oversized <laughs> truck comes through like oversized. You need the pickup truck in front of the car. We're going to bring him in. Um, yeah. Uh, and so none of these ways are actually helping your fat friends. It's It should be called enabling your fat friends. So I love yeah. seeing stuff like this and just realizing like, how soft do you have to be both physically and mentally to like need the world to cater to how fat you are? 
Are you just saying, are you saying that to me? No, I'm saying it broadly. I'm, I'm saying it broadly. Saying it this way or are you saying it this way? <laughs> well, I was tilted. <laughs> yeah, that's what I wondered. Um, <laughs> yeah, is there anything you want to add to that list? Um, I have one. Avoid plastic chairs, I would say. That's a, yeah. you know, make sure the chairs aren't plastic. That's at the dog a good park. One. At the dog park. <laughs> Or like if you're walking up a hill to help your fat friends, if you put your hands on their lower back and then just lean forward mm-hmm. and then push them up the hill, that actually helps a lot. <laughs> um, all right, let's keep it moving. A few more things in housekeeping. Uh, guys, I know I mentioned this a few months ago, but I think sometimes you need to reiterate on the show and refresh people's minds. Uh, just a reminder to all the men out there, we should not be doing lip syncing TikTok videos ever. I was watching, um, well, JVT. From mm. Alex's primetime Stein show. Oh yeah! Wow. Yeah, he he does them, and we caught you, Jimmy. We caught you. You're doing TikToks. You're lip syncing. We caught you. Yeah. You're under arrest. Yeah. Just report yourself. To, turn yourself into a local precinct, and we'll get there. Alex, primetime Stein, please handle Jimmy. It's not good. Fair. All right, let's move on. Uh, snarf, snarf, a banyan updates. We're still working on that. That's a longer term thing. No direct updates this week. We're working on a song. We're working on some people. Yeah. Everyone's commenting snarf, snarf stuff, which I appreciate. Um, there's actually a video of someone in a in a live stream. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Mentioning snarf, snarf. Yeah, this is some someone else's podcast. Rumbledore says, congrats to snarf, snarf O'Banion on getting out. Never broke, never snitched, just like his song. I'm real playa. I'm a real OG Better watch out because I'm because here I come. It's S S O B hashtag Fleckus talks. What the fuck does any of this mean? He's got to be talking about. Is he talking about Bannon getting out of prison? <laughs> Steve good. Bannon. That's good. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Okay. So just confuse him, guys. That's good. And then we also have some schizo comments. Some people have been leaving comments on like Dan Crenshaw and Rob Smith. Uh, just give us an example of one. Yeah, so uh, this one's on Crenshaw. It goes, fam, let's expose camouflage Crenshaw and swapping teams. Although, love collecting, with a K, silly toys, hate egregious politicians. Obvious Democrat clownery amidst strange times. Well, it sounds like gibberish schizo nothing. It sounds a little schizo, but But... when you type it out and you start reading the Zodiac style (laughs) and you start reading the first letter of every word... It spells out Fleckus Talks, the podcast. Which is always appreciated. Uh-huh. There's another one on Rob's, I think. Yeah. Funny little inquiry. Enquiry. Enquiry with an E. <laughs> with an E. Can ceviche after sports tickle algorithms? Let me know soon. Thanks. Hopefully Ethan pre-booked our double cabana. Anyway, stay timeless. Uh, and what does that stand for? Fleckus Talks, the podcast. <laughs> Same <laughs> yeah. thing. Yeah. Hey, you guys are nuts. Yeah, this is you good guys shit. guys are nuts. He sent it to me, and I'm like, what am I reading? And he's like, read the letters. Read the first letters. Yeah, so fantastic work, everyone. Nice job. Yep. We're out of housekeeping, and we're into Cringe of the Week. Actually, I have one last piece of housekeeping. Okay. Uh, the University of Texas is now promoting the word women, W-I-M-M-I-N, so that students uh-huh. and faculty can avoid the word ending in men. According to University of Texas, this is empowering. That's very good. That uh, good job, ladies. Yeah, it shows us how rational you are. And and who's how, boss? Yeah, <laughs> yeah, you're not unhinged from a word that's been uh, not unhinged from a timeless word. Um, and it seems like you know America, the the dumbing down, uh, idiocracy type shit that's going on. We're trending towards pigeon language. Mm. You know, remember when we covered that on the show? Yeah, yeah. So why, why did why people the homeless? Why some people they women? Yeah. Women now. Makes it easy for everybody. Yeah. And the country's full of illegal immigrants who don't speak English. Yeah. So it helps to... Really dumb it down. Really dumb it down. And then all the kids in school, they don't know how to read or do math. Yep. So it's like, we're all going to meet at the bottom. Yeah. Nice, low, common denominator. Uh All right, let's get into cringe. Let's go. Um, Barstool fired Mincy. Uh, for accidentally saying the N word while I guess reading a rap song or reading along to a rap song. Yeah, he was doing a live stream. I saw it. I saw the source clip. Um, he was reading a lot uh, during a live stream. He was rapping a song and then he said, "I G G A." He said the mm, the light version. He said the light version of the N word. And then uh, anti cancel culture Dave Portnoy. What did he say about it? Um, Dave Portnoy did a big press conference. We're not going to play it all, but um, he basically said, you know, we talked to. Barstool got bought. They got bought by uh, Penn Gaming, which runs casinos. And then Barstool 
is obviously a big gambling culture, and they have the app, the Barstool app, to gamble on. So they got bought by Penn Gaming to basically be like kind of a marketing and entertainment wing of Penn. And Portnoy said he fought tooth and nail. He fought to keep Mincy for his obvious slip up. The guy went turned white, you know, as a ghost. He goes, oh, shit, like realized his mistake. Obviously, it's not a big deal. Um, yeah, we, we all we all say the word. Yeah. Yeah. Do you do you go like this when you're in your car? Yeah. Rapping along to Gangster's Paradise or, or whatever. Making jokes to your friends in the group chat. Yeah. Do you go like this when you type it every day? Yeah. Do you put the little stars in the uh, parentheses and the little blurred out version? Yeah. Um, and so anyway, Dave Portnoy had to do an emergency press conference. This guy got fired and it basically wasn't up to Portnoy. It wasn't up to the bar stool. It was it came from up top. Yeah. Because they were worried about losing ga- gaming licenses and stuff like that. So, yeah. Um, Portnoy was saying, uh, He's a great guy. It was done by accident. There's not a racist bone in his body. He's been loyal from the beginning. He's one of our best, uh, one of our best employees. Yeah. And it's like all these things like, yeah, yeah, yeah. And then that's why we had to fire him. But because the, the gambling company is scared we might make less money gambling, which would be really bad because of the, the someone said the N word by accident as a joke. Yeah. So I don't get how that works, how the gambling <laughs> company's revenue would be affected by someone saying the n-word a little bit yeah um and it it feels to some like the end of an era you know that's the first like call down from above that's like uh you know you have to do this you have to fire this because usually it's like no we're going to use our logic we're not going to use the dumb society standards obviously it was a mistake he was sad i don't get how a, a gambling company could lose their license for that like that's the fear but it's like is that is is everyone who participates in gambling really offended by accidental n-word use i don't know i think it's the fear that some woke person is the gaming commissioner or something and you know that jake it's a slippery slope right from there which is scary which is why i kind of wish dave port i took a stand uh, a little bit more because that's a hill worth dying on it's not some it's random his. guy it's not some whatever it's like you're one of your og boys yeah who's been there from the jump and everyone knows is great and everyone in the company loves him and everyone knows he's not a bad dude made one little mistake, which isn't even a huge deal. Yeah. And now you have to fire them because the gambling company is scared they're going to lose the money. And it's like, where does the money for the gambling company come from? Oh, people's pockets, people's 401ks, people's retirement, people's kids' college funds. We need to keep getting that money yeah. in for the gambling. So yeah. it's like a little bit of a backwards world. Yep. And it's like, oh, you know, we sold out. We sold. Everybody made a lot of money. I have $100 million now. And it's like, but you can't make the final say. You don't have the final say anymore Mm -hmm. on the important stuff. So it's sad. It's very sad. Ben Mincy, I think he's kind of like a New Orleans, Southern Mississippi type guy, too. Really? Well, they better give him money. We'll see. I don't know what they're going to do. You got to give him a big chunk on the way out. Um, I don't think they reward big chunks to the soft A N word guys. I don't think they do that. We will. Yeah. Come work for us, Mincy. We'll sign you. We'll start a sports win. <laughs> yeah, we'll sign you. All right, let's move on. Uh, Harry Sisson, one of the trans influencers. Yep, yep. Um, I believe he's a girl to a boy. Yeah, one of the trans Demo- Democrat operatives. Yeah. This is a message to all the Republicans funded by the NRA, and this was inspired by a fantastic paper written by Chloe. Let me tell you something. Gen Z has sat by and idly watched as our friends and our family members are killed in schools and a gun epidemic has overtaken this country. We have sat by and we have idly watched over and over and over again as you value NRA money and the right to That's a gun. Good. Over- Thank you. You're a pussy, Harry. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> it's like you're scared of guns. You're manic. You're out of control. Those types of people shouldn't be in leadership positions. You're, you know, you're you're passionate, but you're not really in charge of anything. You're out of control. You're yelling in your car. Yeah, that's like my take. Why would we listen to you? You're manic. Mm-hmm. You're yelling. Mm-hmm. Um, a good thing for these guys. It's like if you ever get into a debate with one of these young uh, Democrat trans influencers, progressives, yeah, trans. You can just say like, "Hey, Harry, is trans normal or abnormal?" And he'll go. Trans is normal. <laughs> and you go, oh, okay. Like, that's it. Oh, trans is normal. Yeah. Okay. Got it. Um, I, did I say this on the show before? I'm going to start addressing gay and transgender and all that, uh, like a 1950s wasp psychologist. Mm. Did I say that before on I the show? I don't think so. Uh, I think I said it to you, but it's like antisocial behavior. Just calling it like, <laughs> you know, whatever they did in 1950. Uh, that's where I'm at mentally. Yeah, me too. 
Uh, let's get into some of the good trans stuff. We have a good uh, trans cringe. Uh, the smelly trans person first. Yeah, this is the kind of the self snitching, is I would call it. Yeah. Hi, I'm Sam Decor. This is Jade Kohler. And uh, well, we're here for uh, an interesting reason today. You want to tell him, Jade? Um, at work today, I was sent home for having an odor. Um, our store manager, Faith, pulled me to the back to talk about something. Sam was asked to be my witness. Um, she said that last week someone told her that I had an odor, and she then said that today I smelled of sweat and offered to get me deodorant. Um, That's good. I was then. It's like, do you think you don't smell? Is that the argument? Oh, the, you're, that's transphobic. You're making that up. I don't really smell. Like, how embarrassing. Second time you've been smelly at work. It's like you're snitching on yourself. Yeah. You smell. You work at Starbucks, and they probably are trying to run a business here, and you smell. Uh, you're Also, uh, the, the at for these, they posted this to um, the, the Instagram is or the TikTok is called SB Workers United. So it's like already we're the group that's trying to like unionize and milk Starbucks out of everything they can. Um, and your manager is kind enough to pull you to the back room and go, hey, you know, we, we need to talk about something. I know you're going to be very ashamed and embarrassed. Um, I'll get you some deodorant. It's not easy for me either. No, no. Bring in my witness. Bring in my little rat boy. Witness. <laughs> <laughs> um, and then tell the world about it. Tell the world about how you're smelly. And then uh, being told you're smelly, I guess, is oppressive stuff these days, right? Yeah. It's no, there's no shame anymore. You're not allowed to be mortified. Wouldn't you? If someone told you, like, hey, got to send you home, you kind of smell bad. Wouldn't that be like the last time anything like that ever happens? Yes. Where you go, oh, my gosh. Like, yes. I can't believe that. Of You're not course. allowed to be mortified anymore. Um, yeah, I think that person doesn't smell. Take a take a poll to, with the audience. Yeah. What are the chances that this person really smells versus they don't? Yeah, exactly. Um, all right, let's move on. Uh, it's transphobic to say this person's a man. I don't really know how else to tell you this, but if you saw me dressed like this, walking down the street in my heels, pretend I shaved my beard and I had one of these on my face, you would have no fucking clue, all right? I don't really personally use passing as like my threshold for womanhood. That's good. You'd have no clue if I wore a mask that covered my whole face. <laughs> yeah, you're counting on that one 2021 rule where people oddly covered their entire face and beard. Yeah, if I covered my whole face with this mask and covered my beard. And dressed in completely girls clothes. Yeah, you'd have no idea. It's like <laughs> that's like their <laughs> threshold. That's the bar you need to pass. If I have a full mask on, yeah. Um, so this is one of those like don't trust your own eyes things. Yes, which the deep state loves doing to us. Mm -hmm. They have like these things where you have to like not believe what exactly what you're seeing and don't trust your own eyes. And I'm sure that's just like them planting the seed from some for some later psyop mm -hmm. where we'll have to like second guess what we're seeing. And then we'll go, I don't know if I should, you know, I saw that bearded guy and that ended up being a lady. So who knows what's what? Yeah. That's I took his mask off and then it shocked me. Yeah. And so if you want to pass, if you're trans, you really want to pass, you can do the surgeries, you can do whatever. It's going to cost you about 200 grand in surgeries. Yeah. And one of the things you people are forgetting, you got to shave those elbows down. Oh, yeah. When you're really thin, like this guy or the You look Dylan, like a point guard boxing out on rebounds, you know? Yeah. Like sharp elbows. The Dylan Mulvaney types. It's like, oh, yeah, you're kind of like a, a girl twink, I guess. But you go down and then you get like these pops with your elbows. Shoulders, too. The shoulders yeah. have a thing that a girl's never it's have. It's like a big elbow mm -hmm. and then like a lanky arm. Yep. It don't fully look right. So let's shave those elbows down. <laughs> Add it to the list of surgeries, guys. All right, moving on. Uh, that bearded lady wants respect. This one? Yeah. Let's see what he's up to. Anyone to respect me. I'm demanding it. When I tell you what my pronouns are, I expect you to use them. I deserve baseline human respect. You don't have to tolerate me. You don't have to accept me. You don't have to like me. But you do have to respect me. And That's if you don't... Do, do we do? That's like the opposite of the truth. That's well, since when is that the case? I don't respect Joe Biden. He's the president. If I saw him, I wouldn't go, 
all right, put everything aside political. I am meeting the president. It's like, nah, he's a Muppet. I don't even want to shake his hand, and that's the cool part. Yeah, like, you got to respect this guy who thinks he's a lady. This person and I could both be in like an 1890s circus. The bearded lady in the, the world's 300, fattest. <laughs> 300 pound man. That, uh, you know, we could yeah, make some money of back course. in the right times. Of course. Throw in a, a little small guy and you got yourself a <laughs> band, baby. Um, also, yeah, the respect thing. It's like there, there's a certain thing like even me, if I was in a coffee shop and I saw a drastically trans like crazy guy, right? Mm-hmm. Big shoulders. It's like, uh, I'll, I'll go, excuse me, you know, if I need to get by. Mm-hmm. There's like a certain baseline of politeness, you know? Yeah. Obviously, I'm thinking and I'm laughing with my friends later and that you see that freak. Um, but the respect, it's like, no, man, like your mailman could make an offhand comment and it's like, you'll lose respect for him (laughs) just because you exist. And you're actually, you're existing in defiance of God. That's so true. If I'm being completely honest. That's exactly. So it's like, if it comes to respect, it's like, you're actually on the list of things to not respect. To absolutely disregard. So yeah, yeah, obviously you're, you're here. You're in, you're at Fleckus Talks, the podcast. You made it. But isn't that so weird? The entitlement. Mm. I deserve respect. It's like, what are you talking about? Every single dad on earth goes, respect is earned, not given. It's like the most common fucking thing. Well, that bearded guy probably didn't have that experience. Yeah. Mom probably told him everyone's got to respect you. He said, thanks, mom. I'm going to turn myself into you. Yep. And dad's not around. That's probably what happened. Yep. Uh, The trans bottom surgery regret. Yeah, we like to show one of these every once in a while. Important. Two years ago, I got gender reaffirming surgery. Here's a fucking honest update. Do I regret it? Short answer is yes. Don't get me wrong. I got it done twice. It looks Barbie. Why do I regret it? Well, because I will never be able to live a normal life. After the surgery, you have to start dilating to keep the space they gave you. You start from doing it four times a day to once a week for the rest of your life. I was fine with that. See, the problem is... I had major complications, and now for some reason, I need to do it every single fucking day. Now, obviously, I've had relations, and girls, we all know, guys don't fucking know what to do. So it's not really worth it to me. The problem is, I cannot stop. If I stop, it's going to close up and create a bubble, and that bubble could literally create an infection that could... The two options here are, I dilate for the rest of my life, or I get it removed surgically. Surgery goes for yeah. 70000 and um, I don't want to go through Us guys don't know what to do. You know how it is, girls. <laughs> and that includes you, the subject of the video, <laughs> us guys. Yeah. You know how it is, girls. Guys don't know what to do when they get down there into the, the hole that it, was chopped into you. Yeah, the space that she called it. Yeah. Um, uh, it's just another one of those, I don't know, gay guys who are trying. So I have a theory. For a lot of trans people, uh-huh. it's like that was a, a man, right? Of course. And it's a it's a gay man. And the gay man probably wants to hook up with straight guys. Mm. And then the straight guys don't like the gay man because straight guys are straight. Uh-huh. So then the gay man says, okay, I'll make myself a lady to attract the straight guys I've always wanted. So it's always it's always like an end goal of like trying me, to get the attention. Let me from sneak the, around. Yeah. Sneak around to the side I want to be on. Yeah, um, exactly. And that person's passing like more than most. And she they him still regrets the the gender affirming surgery so yeah. that's like a, the most passing you can get and they're still saying i regret getting this surgery i need to dilate every day otherwise my front hole will close up and what's the point of making the front hole if it's like it doesn't help with your pissing <laughs> it hurts with your pissing these people all have like their intestines are connected there's yeah. some weird shit going on it's not it's not like a sex organ no it's it's purely a fuck hole right for the for but it's shit. like doesn't you don't it doesn't feel good of course not. So I don't understand what the what the draw is to take pictures of yourself. Maybe my favorite is even when you're doing a trans regret video about how bad it is and how you have to dilate and stuff, you still have to use a euphemism like, oh, the space that they gave me. You yeah. mean the mutilated pocket in front of your <laughs> where your penis yeah. used to be? Like, <laughs> I don't know, man. Like they need to talk in euphemisms even when they're denouncing this very surgery that they got. Yeah, you that's know? so true. So. Uh, I saw a tweet in the replies, and it says, evil preaches tolerance until it's dominant, then it silences the good. It's pretty much what's going on here. Yeah. Uh, let's go to the guy. No one knows I'm trans. <laughs> <laughs> so you mean to tell me that our elected officials are so dense that they've forgotten an entire portion of the trans community exists, i.e. trans men? Many of us have had phalloplasty, motoidioplasty, and therefore have penises but under these bills would be required to use a women's restroom because 
they state that it, you have to use a restroom that aligns with the sex mm, chromosomes. Leave it there. Yeah. yeah. We don't care really what he's saying, right? Yeah. Little boy. His shirt. No one to say no one knows I'm a transsexual. Nobody knows I'm transsexual. Mm, mm, let's look. Mm, analyzing. Mm, Sherlock mm, Holmes. Mm, mm, five mm. foot four. Mm. Huge no, arm scar. No Adam's apple. Yeah. Shirt that says I'm trans. Not No one knows I'm trans. Mm. Transgender. 99% transgender. Yeah, exactly. Not hard to figure out. Yeah, the giant scar, too. It's like, how big did your little fucking fake dick need to be? Yeah. <laughs> Have you seen some of the pictures? I, I think we've showed a few, but we've had to blur yeah. them. They're like a, a summer sausage that you get on a picnic. Yeah. They, they really make them clownish. And you we can were, tell how much clownish and how much size they went with, with how big their arm scar with, is. With how their Mickey Mouse So they're kind of like, yeah, take it from about here to right around there. <laughs> a nice forearm size summer sausage. And we're, we're going to show you another clip shortly uh, about the, the dildo guy. Yeah, that's but, coming next. But I think part of it is like this porn brain thing mm-hmm, where they're all, they're all like porn and like they think, yeah, I need to fuck like a guy yeah. and they give me the summer sausage that's like this <laughs> and it's like you're shoving that into most likely a a, a man-made hole as well that needs yeah. to be dilated because you know they they date each other all the time and it's just like what what even happens mm. so just, and i don't know if you saw the dylan mulvaney uh little line yeah from our favorite dylan mulvaney or like the articles written about me using he pronouns and calling me a man over and over again and i i feel like that should be illegal i i don't know that's that's just <laughs> i'm bad sure it job. will be soon they're gonna try <laughs> yeah and that's my line and then it's like we talked about this before how the uh the deep state the powers that be they use like these disenfranchised oppressed classes like the trans people to really bring their agenda in mm-hmm. so they'll lead block with the trans person and then anyone who calls them out or makes fun of the trans person or doesn't agree with the trans person's ideology, then they get censored and like deleted off stuff. So it's like a very useful tool for the deep state. They lead block with this oppressed class. We go, oh, that's a guy in a dress. And then they go, ooh, saw you call that woman a guy in a dress. You're deleted. And that's like a good way the powers that be can get their uh, political opponents removed from social media. Absolutely. So that's kind of what's and, coming. And this is, we, we didn't talk about this, but I saw something that was basically like that, the lead blocking with the oppressed class. There was a poll that surveyed like maybe a thousand people and it said, how, what percentage of the U.S. do you think is black? Mm-hmm. And people were answering like 40, 45%, <laughs> like stuff like that. And it's 12, it's 12%. So that's the same thing, lead blocking with the oppressed group, quote unquote, and then everyone thinks, whoa, that's a huge problem. They're ever yeah. that's they're Americans. That's all of America. Yeah. And it's twelve percent I had one causing of those trouble too. in cities. Yeah, exactly. I had right. one of those in a DM once during like I think it was during George Floyd. And I asked the person who was like mad at me on Twitter, I said, How many people do you think have been killed by black people have been, unarmed black people have been killed by the police? And they said, I don't know, 20,000. <laughs> and I was like, it's like 12 yeah. last year. It was 12. It's like 12 and nine of them pulled out a gun. <laughs> well, <laughs> if he said unarmed, whatever. Yeah, exactly. But, but that's usually how it goes. But it's 12, not 20,000. Yeah. Um, let's go to the guy with the, the bulge at the gym. Yeah, this is the porn brain. We're going to have to blur all the... Right, I'm back to give you all my honest review. Just to recap, I got a 7-inch in a tan color, and I also got a carrying kit so I can wear it without a strap. Um, so here I am after carrying it. It took about three tries, but I managed to stick, and as you can see, it looks like a standard men bulge. And here I am at the gym wearing with, with shorts, and as you can see, uh, it doesn't look visible to the naked eye. As for the peeing aspect, um, thankfully, I did not leak even once out there, so I'm really happy about that. And now as I get through my leg day, I wanted to see how well the curing sticks uh, to my body. And so far, it's going through very well. We did the squat. We're at the leg curl. Now we're getting through a standard leg day at the leg <laughs> extension. It's still holding up pretty well. That's as- good. It's like and he says uh, he says it gets loose when he does cardio. He's riding the bike and like doing jump ropes later, risking it. I was like, what's the why are you giving yourself a bulge at the gym? Like you're attaching a rubber thing to you to feel like you have a dicks and then you have like a somewhat visible bulge. That's like so inappropriate. It's hugely <laughs> and it's bricked. It's bricked up. It feel that thing's not soft. That's hard. Yeah. Um, Nothing like feeling like your authentic self by attaching a a seven a inch seven va- <laughs> veiny seven inch veiny to, to your little to, girl body to go work out. A lot of these people say like, oh, God made me transgender. Like that's what they're thing. Like God made me this way. Uh-huh. 
And it's like, well, God made you how you were, and then you made yourself God, and then you completely flipped everything and changed your most fundamental truths about you. Like, oh, God made me this way. It's like, mm, God Mental. made you. Yeah. God made you how you were. Some sort of affliction in your mind made you think you were a God and you could change. Um, but yeah, again, this is all like, you know, the girls, we showed that picture last week, the little boys and the big girls. Uh, yeah. This is like a little guy, like a five foot three, five, four, probably. But this just a veiny seven incher and he needs everyone at the gym to see it. Yeah. Um, right. Imagine if this guy was like doing jump ropes or burpees and like a seven inch dildo fell out and everyone was like, hey, you need to get the fuck out of here. Yeah. Was that in your ass? Are you doing fetish shit here? <laughs> Falls out and you're immediately banned from the gym. Yeah. Do not come back. And then they'll say, no, they, that's not banned. It needs a free membership. So that's what they're up to. The girls, uh, the girls, they have to dilate every day. Otherwise, it, uh, the hole closes up and a bubble forms and you get an infection that you die. The little little boys, they need to play with their dildos. This is like, <laughs> this is what they're up to, guys. And it's in public and you have to respect it. Yeah. They Big demand it. respect, and they smell like shit. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> We're painting a very good picture of what's going on in their day-to-day -day right yeah. now. They smell. They got little sex toys in their pockets. They, if they don't have sex toys, they have a rot pocket that smells too, mm -hmm. and they're all around, and you need to respect them, and you should be, you should be dating them. Uh, yeah. Let, let's do the before and after couple. This has some copyright music as well, so there's no audio, but so here's them before starting hormones. And then after, they they just switched. <laughs> they this switched. little face this guy makes, the guy who became a girl. This little face, his little sultry. This is his like. Oh, that's his good I'm angle. Twirling my hair. This is my angle. <laughs> that's my good angle. I got my hair covering. It's my good side. Oh, there's another white couple just gone. <laughs> <laughs> gone from the procreation, from anything. So Yeah. So if you have kids, you need to have a kid for your to replace you, a kid to replace your wife, and then a kid to replace... Two kids to yeah, replace, to replace this tranny couple who switched. <laughs> they just switched. And then the girl's like, I'm the guy now. Uh, That's what I've always wanted. And then the guy's just like, I, I don't even know what to say. I'm just a girl. You know, you say what you will about the trans community. They entertain us. Yeah. You know, they I, give I, us a yeah. lot. I love trans people. <laughs> Flacus has been saying that recently. Like, <laughs> and he just also has been randomly saying, I love the illegal immigrants. Yeah. Like, he's just a nut. So. I love it. So I see a video of like that or whatever comes across my timeline, and then I'll just out loud, I love trans people. <laughs> this is great. It's nonstop entertainment. Let's do the trans fight KO. <laughs> What's on? Ooh. Slumped him. Bow. Still a dude. Still a guy. Knocked out. Still a little 5-5 five, five puncher. He got slumped. And that guy might be the worst fighter ever. What do you do? Just encroach and then never grab him? Well, never you, do anything? Yeah. You lean forward and then you close the gap and you lead with your chin. Yeah, exactly. Slump. You lead him with a knockout spot. You go, huh? Huh? What would you say? Yep. Um, but that, yeah, you got to be careful because if you get into an altercation, you got to remember that it's a man you're fighting. It's obviously. still a man. It's obviously. still a man. All right, let's get into Urban Decay. And it's a twink man, so it's lower. It's but. lower, but it ain't a lady. Yep. Uh, let's get into Urban Decay. We have some good Urban Decay here. Uh, the the guy in the subway, what's the guy's name? Everyone's uh, saying say his name, so I should know it. I feel like we should almost ignore it. Uh, yeah. Jordan Neely. So everyone's freaking out about this. The Jordan Neely was on the subway. He was yelling at people. I think he said, quote, I'll kill everyone or I'll, I'll, I'll hurt. He said, I'm not afraid to go back to jail. Took his jacket off and threw it on the ground after menacing everyone for a while. Yeah. And then a Marine went behind him and choked him out. Uh, the Marine, along with three other passengers and two of which were black. So the whole train banded together to stop this guy. Um, and that's the giveaway, too. It's like when you see him choking the guy out. You'd think if it was like uncalled for, people would be like, all right, let Stop, him go. That's enough. That's, that's enough. enough. Everyone's trying to hold the guy. Everyone's down. like, hold him till the police come, right? So obviously he was causing problems. There was two guys that were helping that were black, right? But the the framing is zoomed in on just the white guy choking him. <laughs> of course. Uh, they're gonna try and make this like a George Floyd part two. The guy got arrested like 44 times before. One of them was he punched a 67-year-old woman in the face. I think it was 60-year-old. 60 60-year-old You're woman. playing fast and loose with the facts, but you're getting them broadly right. Yeah. 
Um, but yeah, this this guy is an absolute, and he's a subway menace. Like this is what he does. I arrested forty four times. Exactly, and I I saw another um, another video of him terrorizing around, and like two old white guys got knocked over. Mm-hmm. So it's like this guy is a habitual subway offender. Yeah, and then if you stand up to him, like you should, you get arrest. I don't know if they're going to, they let him go, but there's going to be like calls for his arrest. They're going to want to charge him. Mm-hmm. Mayor Adams was actually had a pretty good take about it. He was pretty fair about it. Really? Yeah. He was like, he called out AOC for saying that the guy was murdered. He's like, it wasn't a murder. Yeah. And then uh, I saw this meme, which I thought was really good. Cops are useless. We need community policing. Citizen chokes out schizo having a violent meltdown. No, not like that. This is literal vigilanteism. <laughs> Police arrest this man. He broke the law. Uh, then another guy, uh, Torre, on uh, Twitter, who has a big following. Oh, yeah. Real progressive, muppy, you know, idiot. This is a while ago, right? He said, a homeless man yelling on the New York City subway is normal. We see it all the time. What's not normal is for a Marine to sneak up behind him, put him in a chokehold, and unalive him. That's not justified. The Marine could have just done nothing. He should be charged. And that same guy, Torre, it was a different situation uh, a while ago, and he tweeted, a 77-year-old white customer at Dunkin' Donuts was upset about something, and he called the black 27-year-old employee the N-word. The brother told him, say it again. The old man did. The brother knocked him out. The old man fell, lost his consciousness, and died. He fucked around and found out. So, big difference, I guess. What's say the difference the no, there, no Torre? Word. What's the difference between these situations, Torre? And th- there's nothing. There's no consistency. Like, you know, us, we've said from the beginning of this podcast, no word equals violence, no mm. matter what. Whoever throws the first punch is the criminal, obviously. Yep. Um, blah, blah, blah. And so, I mean. Because this, our dads taught us that. And my favorite part about this whole thing is the taking off your jacket. You're, you're already terrorizing the subway, right? You're walking around intimidating people. You know, these, these street rats know how to work it. They know how to invade your personal space. They know how to try to intimidate. And then he's, he's taking off his jacket yelling, I ain't afraid to go to jail. <laughs> and it's like. Everyone's saying on the left, like, oh, that's that's nothing. That doesn't count. And it's like anybody who's a man knows that's a threat. That was just you threatened everybody. So uh, we're going to take you out in a nice way. And uh, it didn't work out that way. Yeah, right. Exactly. And there's people on the subway who needed defense. There's women and children, I'm sure, as there always is. And then the guy reacted. But you can't really react in the right way in cities anymore because they don't really have your back. Do you have Eric Adams' quote or whatever he said? Uh, no. I just saw he replied to AOC. And On said, Twitter? Yeah, and said it's crazy that you're calling this a murder, something like that. Gotcha. Uh, and then also- Well, AOC obviously was first to stir the pot. Yeah. It's a murder. This guy was hungry. There, there, there's always a the, the left narrative around it. It's always, he was hungry, asking for food, and the social services failed him, and blah, blah, blah. It's like- the guy will literally punch you in the face. He'll literally punch an old woman, and he's been arrested 40 times, and nothing can keep him in, you know? Yeah. It's all just a revolving door. So instead of fixing the revolving door of criminal justice, let's just uh, side with the criminals and say he was hungry. He was hungry. <laughs> he was hungry. Um, all right. Let's, uh, this also happened in New York City this week. Um, there's a couple quick clips. First, there was uh, shit in the turnstiles in one of the subway uh, systems. Yeah, this is kind of like what... This is what you're defending. Yeah. You can't be famous now because this shit is unacceptable. This shit goddamn in between the goddamn metro stops. So right where you slide in your card, there's shit. And then next, there was a shooting in broad daylight in New York City this week, too. Look at this. Guys in the Nike tech, like the ski mask hybrid things, in an argument. Like once you see the argument and the hands going and like the tone getting raised, cross the street. Yeah. Go, oh, maybe they settled it. I don't know. Maybe. And look at these people walking by as it's happening, these tourists. It's like there's no guy with a roller suitcase. Like there's people right next to that that just had to have that. That that was their New York City experience, their trip. Yeah, Scott Adams. What did he say? Stay the fuck away from you know yeah. people like that. I I would personally say if you see some animated movements uh, and uh, those half ski mask type things or mm-hmm. even hoodies, 
you know, cross the street, maybe do a dead turnaround. Remember we said, don't be ashamed to do a full 180, you know, go around the block, maybe gamble. The other block probably doesn't have, you know, some angry black men willing to shoot into crowds of randoms. Yeah, exactly. I don't know. Just uh, unless you're in a really big rush, you know, why yeah. don't you just save your own life? Uh, speaking of uh, the woman who lost her baby, who got shot. Yeah, this is another uh, pay attention to your surroundings type video. Yeah. And don't walk to certain Information places. Information for you tonight about a woman who was shot multiple times outside of a convenience store in Fayetteville. We now know that woman was pregnant and lost her unborn child. 25-year-old Brittany Rich says she had no idea the three men standing near the ice machine outside the Cumberland Food Mart were up to no good. Pause it real quick. That's Here's her coming up. There's the three guys standing by the ice machine with their hoods up. They have that same mask thing covering their face. Three black teenagers in hoodies outside the convenience store around the ice thing. Covering their face. They had no idea. She had no idea that it was a bad situation. Probably just get nice for the big party that they're hosting later, right, yeah. guys? Probably just get nice. Who could have guessed? Her silver 2010 going. Dodge Avenger outside the store. Security camera video shows Rich leaving the store, and then the confrontation begins. The guy said, give me that and grab my keys. And that's when I thought he was playing because he was young. I was like, what? And then I went at like to reach after him, and he shot me. Rich says he was shot several times. It all happened so fast. Um, he shot me the first time. Actually, I think I was shot like two or three times before I really realized that he had a gun. I looked at him, he had a gun in his hand, but I heard it and I felt it, but I was in shock. After being shot, you see her stumble around the car for protection, then go back inside the store for help. When I got in the store, I realized I was bleeding out and I laid down and everybody was standing around me and nobody was really helping. Meanwhile, the suspects couldn't get the car started. Rich says you have to know how to jiggle the keys just right to make it work. So you see them jump from the vehicle and flee on foot. Rich was taken to the hospital so where they who told her guessed? she was... I could have. Uh, I wouldn't have gotten out of my car. Yeah, and I'm... Does that make capable. me racist? Yeah. Am I a racist? Whoa! And it's like that lady, uh, or am I, or am I just a little bit smart and cautious? A little smart, cautious, a little suspicious. I'm and just, I'm just a a, a a child of suspicion, you know. A little suspicious, yeah. and I think a lot of these like racism things. It's like the black people always complain about white people. The ones that do always complain about white people, and it's like that's uh, just like how they're feeling. Uh -huh. And I think when white people have a bad feeling about certain black people, like in this situation, we're coming up to the store. That's probably based on experiences or videos you've seen. Yeah. You know what I mean? So there's like a difference. And it's like that lady probably thought like, oh, I have nothing. I'm poor. My car sucks. These guys aren't going to bother me. Yeah, like, they I have nothing to steal. Basically a donut on the front right tire. Like, Yeah, I got nothing. These guys are, you know, reasonable criminals. If they're criminals, they're not going to bother me. Yeah. Little does she know. There's there's no, this is low IQ individuals here. And you, you and know, then no one helped her in the store. Oh, yeah. She laid on the ground. She's pregnant and bleeding out, and everyone's kind of just looking around. What happened? Yeah. I don't know. Should I do anything? Um, another thing I think is funny is I, I'm, I'm a big true crime, true crime podcast listener. I always pay attention to crime stories. Um, and one of the things they always tell you is, like, if you have that gut feeling that's bad, like, don't go in. If you have, like, listen, if the hair is on the back of your neck, stand up, don't do it, and whatever. And it's like, all that goes out the door when it's like a, a group of black people. It's like, don't be racist. Don't be racist. Don't be racist. Nothing's going to happen. That's in yeah. your head, you know, for some of them. Oh, of course. Um, and that's how we were conditioned exactly. to be. And it should be, everyone should be treated equally and rationally. So it's like, if you see a group of suspicious people, whether they're all Asian or black or white, if you're suspicious, it ain't worth it. Go the, go the other way. Yeah, exactly. Uh, let's go to the stuck in the elevator clip. They're stuck in the elevator at some hotel. We was drunk, stuck in the elevator for 30 minutes. I thought it was over. And then, yeah, there's like 20-something people in the elevator. They all get out laughing. Uh, they're probably drinking and partying. Of course. And then not one person thanks the fireman. That's the key part of this video. Probably because, oh, he's a what, white savior. <laughs> oh, another white savior coming to save us. Oh, we don't, you know? Uh, a fireman saves you from a stuck elevator that you overpacked with yeah. like twenty something people. Self inflicted elevator. It's Completely. not like oh the elevator malfunctioned. No, it was you. You pet. You were four hundred pounds over the weight limit. Yeah, probably worse. Yeah, and no one, uh, no one thanks the the fireman. Not one person. 
I was going to do like a thing. I was going to say like this is like a metaphor for society, but the way I wrote it was too racist. Okay. Where it's like, you know, the elevator that they didn't build, they ruined, and then a white person comes to save them, and then they don't even, you know? Yeah. It's a good thing he didn't say it. Yeah. It wasn't going to work. Yeah. No, no, no. I mean, I would be so grateful if someone got me out. Um, And I would also not be in a situation like that because I'm in the elevator, and I'm already a large fellow as it is, so I'm cognizant of weight limits on elevators. I would never, uh, maybe that's my white privilege, but I would never uh, yeah, overstuff the elevator. White privilege is doing the quick math. 4,500 pounds, there's about 10 people here. I'm 300 XX. Yeah. <laughs> <You know. laughs> All right, let's move on. The lady who's too fat to save the baby? Uh, Yeah. This, this is crazy. This was a sad one. This is like a bad dream, this one. She fell. She fell. So the stroller starts rolling away. She falls. Headed straight for the 45 mile an hour road. Can't even get up to save the baby. Maybe she just did leg day. <laughs> or maybe she wanted the baby to go. Wow. You ever think about that? Those are my two theories. She either just did leg day, which probably isn't true based on the love handles I'm seeing there. Yeah, that's true. And then the other one is maybe she didn't want the baby anymore. Uh, you know what my theory is? Hmm. Uh, remember how like there's always those those tales of like, oh, mom, superhuman strength. Her child was pinned under a car and she deadlifted the car. Those are out. <laughs> That's bullshit. Yeah, the mom's left the car to save the baby was a psyop to usher in feminism. I think so. so and you, know, you don't need a man. If you ever have a problem, you can just the adrenaline will let you lift the car. Yeah. You're just as strong as a guy. You just need a little adrenaline. Yeah, don't work out. Um, but as proven, this fatty can't even get up and save their baby's life. So... Yeah. Sad. Let's move on. We're still in urban decay. Uh, we have a lot of urban decay to get to. This, these next few clips, the theme of it is blaming the victim. So in these next few clips, it's people standing up to shoplifters. And instead of saying, oh, shoplifting is bad, this person should be in jail or whatever, the people are getting mad on Twitter at the person who tried to stop the shoplifter. The first one was uh, in Home Depot. Yeah, this one, I think we briefly covered this before on the show, right? Mm -hmm. Um, It said the Blake Mose, 26, had plans to get married to his fiance in August. Today, he was shot and killed trying to stop shoplifters in Home Depot. And then some guy quote tweet that and says, this is a textbook example of a dog whistle. Okay, I don't know. Did it happen? Um, And then someone, some leftist, let them eat GMOs girl goes, uh, imagine dying for Home Depot. Yeah, exactly. And then Mimetic Sisyphus, our favorite guy. Our boy. Our boy, follow him. He said, odd, they never say, imagine killing someone over a phone charger. Isn't that so true? It's always like, mm, don't die for Home Depot, don't be a hero. It's never, don't kill someone over a Ryobi power washer. Yeah, It's exactly. never, why, why are you killing someone? So. It's always, why would you Why would you stop this? You just got yourself killed. It's like, why are you killing for a phone charge? Yeah, the onus is on the guy who want, who's going to be a net positive on America, not the the leech surviving off of uh, corporate scraps, you know? Yeah, so exactly. It's, it's ugly. And then- it Happened these, to TJ Maxx, too. Yeah, these people are all over Twitter. They, like, There's really a ton of people who think like this. You know how they do mm-hmm. the polls on, is it okay to be white? And 40% say, not sure or no. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. It's like, they're out there. Those people really exist. All right, TJ Maxx, let's go. We'll play the video first. They're stealing a lot. And watch, they try to do the walk past. One of them does. And this guy takes a stand. Look at all the others are sneaking out too. So it's a four four woman group. Let me go. Stealing let everything go. from TJ Maxx. Let me go. What the fuck? Let me go. Let me go. What the fuck? She goes to grab him again. Let me go. Let me go. Yeah. Let me go. The shoplifter cried out as someone tried to stop them from stealing. What were that? What was that guy thinking? And then the tweets replying to that are great. Yeah, this is peak delusional. I love it. Um, someone goes, he just wanted to beat up a black girl over some damn TJ Maxx. Yeah, it's his fault. He's he's the he was looking to f- 
beat up a black woman that day. And luckily for him, he ran into a shoplifter. Yeah, and somebody else goes, white, YT, people love acting like they care about big chain stores getting robbed, when in reality, he just wants the chance to beat up a black woman, LOL, because he would have never did it this if she were white. It's like, what are you talking about? They, they, need, they need to create scenarios in their head versus watching the reality unfold. They mm -hmm. need to create an alternate scenario where the races are changed and then, oh, it would, he wouldn't have even come close, you know? Um, and, I, you know, I'd like to imagine a situation like that. I just don't see very many big groups. Four, four women, a four-person team stealing from TJ Maxx, mm -hmm. looting the store. It's not like, we're not talking about, uh, this girl goes over some damn TJ Maxx. And it's like, we're not talking about like, a, 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 I stole a onesie for my baby. Yeah, it's I stuffed every bag I could, and I know no one's gonna I, stop I me. I emptied a rack. I emptied a rack so that I'm gonna resell online. So yeah. I mean, uh, delusional takes, um, but those people exist, and that's the scary part, right? Yeah, and there's a, the Walgreens guy too. He's like the final piece of this. Uh, which one? The Walgreens. The Walgreens guy who's a security officer. Yeah. Um. Basically, there's a Walgreens guy who was a security officer who um. This is mostly in articles and images, so we'll screen we'll post some screenshots of it. But this basically the story goes: this guy was working at a Port Authority Walgreens, right? He's the security guard. He's a retired NYPD. Um, guy comes in, steals some stuff, and the security guard goes, "All right, you can take the food, but don't come back. You're banned from the store." Thief comes back two hours later. Uh, there's an altercation. The thief hits the guy with like a can of something because he's like, all right, this guy already stole once. I'm the security guard. I have to do this. So guy gets a big cut on his eye, a big bruise, um, calls the police, kind of restrains him. And then the police come and what do they do? Hmm. They arrest both. They arrest the security guard and the street rat. Then the, and then the security guard said, don't press charges on the street rat. The security guard is like trying to be a nice guy saying, don't press charges. And then some sergeant in the NYPD goes, no, we have to charge them both because because so. of, of some anti common sense, dumb, dumb rule. Yeah. So now the security guard who stood up to the thief who came back twice and probably robs the store constantly, he uh, is now arrested. Yeah. And he actually can't do his job anymore because they take they took his gun when he was arrested. Um, and so. You can't even defend anything. And the 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 cop who was arrested, the ex cop who was arrested, is obviously suing the NYPD. And so it's now it's like this whole dumb thing that happens where he's going to waste taxpayer dollars. He's going to have to pay a lawyer. Uh, they'll probably settle with him because obviously they were wrong. All because some dummy up the chain couldn't use like common sense. You know what I mean? Yeah. And so it's like let's start the process uh, instead of just not arresting him and everyone's fine. Uh, so just absolutely uh, representative of the, the yeah. decay. And that's New York, you know? That's New York, baby. Big Apple. Doesn't sleep, that city. Yep. Um, there was a guy who was tweeting about the protests in France. This was just like a funny tweet I saw. I think Mimetic Sisyphus posted this, too. It's that one. Oh, yeah. Speaking of police. This guy goes, uh, so there's a, a lot of riots in Paris right now. They're fighting over, uh, I think it was like uh, retirement age that they moved up. They made it so you had to retire later. Paris is out of control. They're mobbing them. It's the riot police versus them. And then this guy goes, hey, American citizens, what's keeping you from fucking up police in your country like France? And if you click his profile picture, he's wearing a hat that says, good ideas don't require force. <laughs> but he's also tweeting, why don't we fuck up the police? So there's just a little microcosm of what's going on. I mean, that's just the mind of like a 95 IQ guy. He's just a little slow. He can't do it. You know, he doesn't have coherent thoughts. And uh, he can only think of things on like an individual basis. And he can't like do a 30,000 overview look of things yeah. and like understand worldviews and like being consistent with your views. 100%. It's just like, oh, yeah, fuck up the police. Oh, yeah. Good ideas don't require force. You know, like all these things that contradict, but he can't look wide enough to see the contradictions. He can only do individual scenarios. Well, I think part of it also is the these people think and act in slogans. Mm -hmm. So they do slogans and then they don't really rectify which slogans clash with the other slogans they have. Like mm -hmm. all cops are bastards, but don't do violence, you know, and they never rectify them. They never have like a an accounting balance yeah. sheet. All cops are bastards. But then it's like someone chokes out a street rat like to protect people who's a, a citizen. 
And it's like, that was bad. We should just call the cops. We should call the police. So, yeah. Um, there's a renounced whiteness guy, bottom right. Yeah, this guy's uh, real funny. If you're watching to the end of this, I don't think you identify as white. You're not a neo-Nazi or you're not a KKK member unless you're hate watching this. And as I've said, go fuck yourself. But if you're, if you're not like that, then you know, you're not sitting around talking about white pride and preserving the white race and our white women and we must keep reproducing and produce white children. You're probably not like that. If you're a decent person, then it should be quite easy to put the whiteness down. So I encourage you to renounce your whiteness and join the human race. Renounce your whiteness. And if you're a Nazi, go fuck yourself. It's like you're a five, six Indian guy. I would, I would throw you out of the saloon like a cartoon. <laughs> like grab you by the belt and the collar. Why don't you go say that to a Nazi's face and see how, <laughs> and see how that goes. But yeah. you got to renounce the whiteness. I think whiteness, what they're calling whiteness, is just having standards. Oh, yeah. Having standards, not just blindly trusting the government. That's, I think, the goal is uh, a lot of white people are the only ones who, like, had standards, know how a country should be run, think small government is good. Mm -hmm. And so white people are kind of the ones standing in the way of total one world government. It's like, yeah, you're mad that street rats are getting violent on the subway and there's no cops and then there's shit in the turnstiles and there's shit on the streets and everyone's on drugs. It's like you're mad because those standards are so low. That's whiteness. Chill out, Nazi. <laughs> you know, that's whiteness. And there was another thing that came out uh, about kind of like whiteness and which is also standards, uh, how hiking is racist. Yeah, this this I thought we were going to put in the self snitching section, but uh, this was an article <laughs> An article, uh, this woman goes, wrote about rural racism, the colonial legacies that mar the British countryside and the groups working to tackle hate and hostility. They're basically saying that, like, hiking in the rural countryside is racist, and here's why. Um, yeah, and so they self-snitch in the article. It says, Nigerian-born Enoch Adeyemi, co-founder of Black Scottish Adventures, recent recently shared his experiences of hiking with a large group of black men revealing that they are constantly subject to spurious complaints about littering, co uh, condescension, and demands to stop playing music. Why should I turn off my music? Just because white Scottish people enjoy nature one way doesn't mean that black people have to enjoy it in exactly the same way. So it's the same thing of like whiteness is standards. They're going on hikes and they're saying that uh, the hikes are you know inherently racist because people are mad about littering and then also playing music on a boombox. It's like, isn't nature hiking supposed to be like nature? And maybe not everyone wants to hear whatever song you want to play loud. And then let's not throw our trash in nature. It's the exact same thing too. <laughs> this woman who wrote who write, wrote this article, you know, she she's probably the same type who believes in leave no trace and like always pack pack in pack out like don't litter in nature. Mm -hmm. And then, but it's also racist to ask it to stop if yeah. the person's black. Um, and so one of the funny things about this is like, the, I don't, I don't, I don't think what they get is like hiking in Scotland, right? Like, sure. You can go to some rural, like remote through camping thing that you'll never see a human. Right. Mm -hmm. But the vast majority of hikes and trails are shared, you know, mm -hmm. it's like, oh, this is the hike near LA. This is the state park near Chicago. Like people get funneled to them to enjoy nature. Yeah. So you're going to inherently have people around, you know, you pass by them, you go, you do the hello, the nod. And so it's like, they're thinking, Oh, nature's so wide. Go, just go somewhere else. It's like, no, this is the hike to the waterfall. I'm only, I'm not going to go hike in the cornfields of Illinois. Yeah. This is the waterfall. This is the end game. Right. Um, so there is a shared nature to it. And then of course, yeah, I, I want to hear, I woke up in a new Bugatti <laughs> as I'm walking past, like, fuck off. Yeah. And littering. That's yeah. like a white privilege thing to not litter. Yes, yeah, exactly. Uh, there's like a, a woman who's. What do I do? <laughs> <laughs> I don't want my it. Paw. I don't, I want to carry it. <laughs> um, there's a lady who dis uh, tweeted about Disney. Yeah, this is, this is a good one too. Um, went, she goes, it's a black woman. She goes, went to Disney this weekend and all I can say is no, thank you. Found it was a wildly underwhelming experience. And it's like, okay, I agree. Yeah. I'm I'm with you. I think it's overpriced and it's a ripoff for families. Let's see. She goes, my biggest pet peeve, the lack of fucking black people. Even in pictures I took, seas of white people. I make a conscious decision and effort to only go into spaces that are comfortable and welcoming to me. Spaces with 80% white people do not fall under that. Like white people's energy is the pits to me. 
just being around them, overhearing their obnoxious conversations, their kids throwing tantrums, the way they violate personal space. Baby, you can keep that. That's crazy take. Because imagine if you reverse the races, you could basically say the same thing about black people. You but could. You could one, could one could. One could say. You it. Couldn't. Um, the the most hilarious part, and I think you kind of brought this up in an earlier point, but we were talking about this off camera, is in situations like this, like her hatred for white people is like all almost in her mind, right? Yeah. And like, it's like, mm, yeah, maybe there was a little yelling. Maybe there, the kid threw a tantrum, this. White people don't do the personal space thing. I'll tell you that much right now, uh-huh. the invading personal space. But then uh, if the reverse were to happen and you went to a playground and it was nothing or a, whatever, a park, and it was Black History Day or something, and it was all black people, it's like the white person who's going to complain about that would complain only due to like something changing. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, oh, it was really loud and it, it kind of smelled, to be honest. You know, they'd say it like shamefully almost or something. But the black people complaining about white people, it's like in their mind. Mm-hmm. It's just a mindset thing. Whereas like, oh, I heard loud music on my hike and the trail had a bunch of fucking Snickers wrappers. It's like <laughs> they let this shit go to go to crap. Whereas this is just like, I didn't like being around the white people. And the energy is just like, mm, mm. there they go. They're probably, blah, blah, blah. but it's like, you can go to that say You can go to like a black, primarily black area or whatever. And it's like, people will be yelling and stealing from the stores and <laughs> looking sketchy at the ice machine. The TJ Maxx is empty. You know, the whole rack you yeah. wanted to check out size large to extra large, the rack's gone. We have to ignore that. Yeah. And there's a funny thing we saw about like uh, the Taylor Swift fans on the bus. So a Taylor Swift concert got let out, and like this black woman who's kind of got the same energy as the person tweeting is say like mad about all the white people coming on the bus, and just look how it goes down. It's a train, but yeah, the train, yeah. When the Taylor Swift concert ends at the same time, you're on your way home. And they're getting mad as if it's gonna be bad. Let's see how it goes. Yeah, everyone just comes on the train politely. Everything's normal. No one's doing anything bad. One second, one second, don't step on the train. It's like, no, you lost. And honestly, I get it, that sucks. Your train went from empty train night to fully packed, but nobody's stopping. Nobody's like going, oh no, it's your train. Yeah, Fuck off, that's called public transpo, baby. Yep, exactly. That's, you know, oh, that those, those pesky white people. It's like I've seen situations where it's the other way around and it didn't go down as pretty. All right, let's move on. Woman killed two in a DUI. The woman in the hospital bed. Yeah, this one's bad. Oh, hey, you never answered me about my car. I'm like, I have school tomorrow, so how do I get my car? Where's my room? Oh, yeah, that's right. Your car is totaled. That's what? Your car is totaled. Totaled? Total, wrecked. Okay, so how do I get it here? You don't. So, I don't go to school tomorrow, is what you're telling me? No, ma'am. You want me to be honest with you? You're going to jail, you don't have a bond, you killed two people tonight. I don't think you understand that. You do not have a bond, you are not getting out of jail. Your car is property of East Peoria Police Department because it's a crime scene. It killed two people tonight. You are clueless with that, clearly. I've already explained this to you. You're going to jail for reckless homicide tonight. You're going to jail for aggravated DUI for killing two people. That's what's going on. So no, you're not going to school tomorrow. You're not getting your car out of impound. Did you just hear what I just told you? You said I'm not going tomorrow. I'm talking about Tuesday. Did you hear what I said? You that said you, I'm going to jail tomorrow. Did you, you're going to jail right when we're down here? Yes. Did you understand what I told that you killed two people tonight? Yes. Yeah, so I'm just wondering when I can go to school. Okay. We're done. Yeah, you're done. You killed two people, and that's how you. That's like the demons fully running the body. Yeah. The NPC is like a 50 50 demon situation. Yeah. And it's like no accountability, no remorse, no feeling bad. And it's like a theme that we see in all of Urban Decay every week where it's basically like me, 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 me. No, anything that's like holds people accountable or holds society accountable is like a problem and is not good. So it's like if you're a shoplifter and you get punched for stealing, it's the puncher's fault. 
If you're a shoplifter who shoots a security guard, you know, the security guard should have stepped in. If you're a heroin addict who shits on someone's stoop and then they spray you with the hose, the guy spraying shouldn't have done that. He should go to jail. Yeah, if a cop roughed you up because you're committing a crime, the cops shouldn't be roughing people up. Kids are failing in school, no more grades. It's like anything that holds people accountable is the new problem and like evidence of now like what structural racism. So now yeah. everyone's just treated like a child. And uh, Mimetic Sisyphus and I were talking about this. He made a good point. Yeah. He says it's weaponized empathy is what it is. Of course. Exactly. Exactly. You need to put your sho- yourself in the shoes. It's never you're putting yourself in the shoes of the law-abiding person, the person trying to restore order. There's order and chaos, right? Yeah. And it's like, who's causing the chaos and who's trying to return things to order? That's where I'm at. It's, and it's good. It's all good versus evil. Same thing like with this AOC tweet. Mm-hmm. This guy was murdered. She's willing to stoke the racial tensions immediately. Yeah. And it's like no desire to learn the facts. The guy's a subway terrorist. Um, the nice part about these George Floyd type incidents and like they really snuck George Floyd by. Mm-hmm. Fentanyl. He pointed the gun at the pregnant woman. Uh, you know, but the problem is whenever they try to make a martyr from a street rat, they don't have it. You know, there's yeah. the substance isn't there. So it's like they can try to say all they want. They but can try to bake a cake, but you don't got the eggs or the sugar. It, exactly. You have a criminal. You have a street criminal who uh, is arrested 40 times. So if you can make a cake out of that, good luck. <laughs> but I think you're making a cake for people with an IQ below a certain critical thinking level. Yeah, exactly. So. Well, let's move on to Uplifting Gold. We can't get too down. But we also, I know what's in Uplifting Gold, and I think there's a couple bad things in here. <laughs> Let's start with the one, the lady getting her car stolen at the gas station, but then the guy gives it back. You spoiled it. Please, please, please don't take it, please, sir. Please don't take it, thank you. He gives it back. She's saying, please don't take it. Then he gets out. He goes, thank you, thank you. That's uplifting. Yeah, pleading with a criminal to keep your car. Very uplifting. Yeah, exactly. Uh, The next, the street rat apologizes to the security guard. This is uh, my favorite video I've seen in a really long time. He be shot. Look at him. Look at him. I'm going to shoot his ass. He's fucking around today. I remember you. You're the security guard of the building, aren't you? Mm-hmm. I've been having problems with you, man. Mm-hmm. And you know what, man? I, I, I want to apologize to you, man. I, okay. I hadn't had my medicine, man. I'm on psychotropic medicine, man. You know I'm a schizophrenia, you know? Right. I, mean? I hear voices. I see things. That's, they say this is not really there. And I just want to apologize to you because I was wrong. Hey, you know, I've been working all day. I've been working for 12 hours all day. Can you just shake my hand? Of course. That's all I've been wanting was an apology from you. That's That's it. That's all. I'm just trying to do my job, sir. But you know what, sir? I was thinking about something. (laughs) Motherfucker, this nigga crazy. Do it. Come on. Hey, you going to fucking jail, man. You know what? Hey, get the fuck Uh, off my property. Go on. After all that. I I hate your ass. You're the Uber driver who took my motherfucking money. You're the Uber driver who took my money. It's like, no, no, no. He's like, there's a very coherent, hey, I'm on psychotropic uh, drugs. Yeah. You know, That's I what get- I say. I'm sorry and shake your head. Got him. Sucker punch. And it's like you have an arch nemesis now. And like that job, if you're a security guard, it's like, what, you make 50K a year or something? And it's like you have to deal with that guy who probably will come back and try and kill you at some point. If you're, yeah, exactly. That job's not worth 500K. If you're a security guard, like, and you just have one extra street rat who's a menace, it's like your responsibility goes up and up and up. Yeah. Like, there's some security guard in Utah in a 90% white Mormon county who's like, (laughs) kicks back. He watches YouTube all night. It doesn't fucking matter. But this guy, high alert. Yeah, exactly. All right. Next, the fire chief sprays the homeless guy. Yeah. This is a homeless guy. The fire chief comes. Sprays him with bear mace. This is from 2021. Sprays him hard. I don't know why it was on. It went viral this week. Um, that's kind of some Batman shit. Yeah. I think a, he got in trouble for that, probably. I think he did. Uh, that guy, they're saying that guy is the police chief who was attacked with a metal pipe. Right they're, after. They're accusing him. Yeah. And so, and he, he denies it, but. Yeah, that's weird. I don't it know sounds like got, he started a battle with the street rats. and uh, I don't know how that got an uplifting gold. Yeah, um, that's what I said. Let's go next to the dad watching his son fight in his first NHL hockey fight. Get on, Trent! Here we go! Yeah, here we go! There you go, baby! 
Isn't that nice? That's great. That's, that's as good great. as it gets. Yeah, that's a nice Americana right there. Uh, all right, let's move on. We have a, a couple of clips, and we're running out of time. We're not going to okay. rush it. Okay. Uh, the lady drove her car into the boat ramp. Yeah, this is what I call what? space cadet. What's going on? Yeah, this is bad. Pretty sure that wasn't supposed to happen. Uh, so the car's gone right now. Like, it's a total wreck. Fleckus doesn't agree. I don't it think is. It's, wreck. it's a total wreck. As soon as your engine is fully submerged, you're done. But I think there's like, you can just get reversed out of there and you have no. damages, but it's not fully done yet. You don't watch enough qualified captain then. But basically, once you can fast forward a little bit, once they try and get her out, right, keep going, keep going. Right here as they're getting her out. You can see the like the car is fucked, but not fully fucked. No, it is. I'm telling you, it, it's fully but, fucked. Right, keep going a little forward. Right there, uh -huh. where she's getting out. Now all the water is going in through the window. Now the car is filling up with water, and there was an air pocket before. Now the car is full of water, and then it starts going back in because it's heavier and going back in, and you can't hold it anymore. But if you kept that air pocket and closed the window, you could have just reversed the thing out of there, and it wouldn't have been that bad. But because you got out, and then you I don't had, know. I don't know what. I'm, I'm having a serious disagreement with you right now. There's no reversing out of there once you're floating into the thing. Well, like, that's a, a, it's a boat ramp. I know. And like, look at the back. You it's think, not even that deep. The people are standing she, there. There's no traction with a minivan like that. What are you talking about? And once it fills with water, that's why it goes back into the into the ocean. It was over as soon as she didn't act in the first like four it's seconds. Sinking. This is the car is gone. Sorry, guys. All right, next. Um, guys. This is important stuff. The tuna in the water. Yeah, tuna in the water. This is cool. Look how beautiful that is, this animal. Look at that. Woo! That's a big old tuna. You see how it just beautifully moved across the top of the water like that? Yeah. That's pretty cool. Tuna are fast. Yep. How, then, how fast do you think they go? Uh, four to mile an hour. That's about right. <laughs> yeah. But you got the boat ramp so wrong. Yeah, well... All right. It's One of us bag. is wrong. One of us is wrong on the boat ramp. That car is unsalvageable, and it was never coming out. Once it starts floating, it was never coming out without like getting roped out or towed. Mm. Well, yeah. Rope. And it's a total Hold loss. Out. It's a total loss. Maybe. All right. Horse on a plane. This is important. Yeah. This is many horses on a plane, actually. This is how they transport horse on a plane. I thought everyone should see that. Four wide. Look at that. Four wide. Um... All right, let's move on. The woman who body shames the girl at the gym. Yeah, let's see how what kind of body shaming. I can't believe I got this on video. That's good. Um, this is, uh, I guess, up for debate. Uh, I I think we can say here on the show. Yeah. Here on the show, Fleckus Talks does not encourage people, women, to work out in their underwear like that. I think it's a trend we're seeing a lot of lately. I'm not going to complain about it. I don't care. I see it in the gym, and it's uh, great. There's a hot girl in her underwear. But it is hot girls in their underwear. Girls are working out in their underwear to work out. They're doing it for male attention, obviously. And I just, I'm not a fan. I know there's people that watch the show who are Fleckus fans, and we love you, uh, but they, they wear their underwear to work out in the gym. We don't agree on this one. Yeah, I mean, it's just... I'm not mad at you, but no, no. you shouldn't be working out in your underwear. That's yeah. like a new thing that came out of nowhere, like these, these shorts, and then like you wear a bra. That's not appropriate workout attire. Well, uh, I mean, maybe it is if you're literally looking for someone to hit on you and become your husband at that gym right now. I mean, yeah, it, but would you want to date a girl who's who wore underwear to the gym? No, you're right. You're right. It's becoming a weird culture thing. I saw another video of a girl who goes like only gym girls will know. And then she's like flexing in the mirror a little bit. And then she pulls down a giant baggy T-shirt mm. to like cover her ass, you mm -hmm. know, 
but she's wearing shorts that have like the ass lifter 3000 with the seam right down the middle. So it goes right up your butt crack. And then she's like, but I don't want to be stared at by gym creeps. Yeah. It's like, what happened? Sweatpants. Arnold. Do an old Arnold style sweatpants. If there were separate gyms where girls worked out by themselves and then guys worked out by themselves, girls wouldn't wear the underwear. I don't think so. They would just be comfortable and wear whatever they're comfortable in. It's all for male attention. That's fine. When people want attention. That's like, you know, you teach their own. The game but, is the game, right? But here on the show, we have a firm don't work out in your underwear stance. Yeah. And that's just what it is. It's just not appropriate. When? Why would you dress like that? Then yeah. like, you're sweating and like you do like these movements that are just like very exposing. Let's have a little more decency. Let's get some modesty going, right? Would your grandma do that? Yeah. Would your grandma ever do that? And then I think that's the filter with which we need to be viewing society. If your grandma saw your workout outfit, she'd go, oh, are you getting fitted for like a skin tight dress or something? Yeah. Oh, are you being tested on your 40 yard dash uh, for millions of dollars and you absolutely need to be the most aerodynamic you've ever been? Yeah. It's like, oh, you're just wearing biker shorts and a bra. Oh, no, you're doing hip thrust to, uh, hip thrusts and uh, those ass reverse ass press things. And you're filming it. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, it's not good. Unless you're like maybe like a bodybuilder. We'll, we'll give an exception. If you're like a, a competitive bodybuilder, then uh, it's a little bit fine. There's a gray area. All right. Last clip. Uplifting golds. And on a high note, the kid that jumps in the pool. Yep. Let's see it. Oh. So the mom's kind of like hesitating, like trying to do a countdown. And the kid's just ready. Go, Summer! Isn't that great? Awesome. Courageous kid. All right, nice. Well, that's the end of the episode. That's the end of Uplifting Gold. How'd you feel about the episode? It was a great episode. Good. So thank you guys for watching. Um, make sure you support our sponsors. Get your steak at your non-vaccinated steak uh, from those ranchers. Those are great guys. CarterCountryMeats.com. Use code FLECUS for a chance to win the big free Bighorn box. Uh, and then join us in Bonus Land. We have some big announcements coming, uh, and we're going to be breaking that news in Bonus Land first. So join us in Bonus Land. We have a huge Bonus Land today. We're going to be talking about the Crowder drama, um, some of the right wing stuff happening. The right wing uh, drama has been going on, so we'll be talking about that there, as well as some other stories we didn't get to. We're going to be expanding Bonus Land, uh, so get over there, join us for that. Patreon.com/slash/fluckus or YouTube join. Links are in the description. Uh, anything else you want to add before we go? No. Like, share, subscribe, all the good stuff. Thank you guys for watching. We'll see you at the next one.